What's up everyone? Mike here, hanging out on the mushroom farm. Great video for you guys tonight. So tonight what I'm going to talk about is vermiculite, alright? Getting it right with vermiculite. I got the mushroom rhymes. Next thing you guys know I'm going to be dropping my mushroom rap album. I hope you're all ready for that. <laughs> but uh, really though, vermiculite. So I've been using vermiculite as a mushroom farmer for many years now. And I kind of got turned on to it, really, like my second year of cultivation. I've been cultivating almost a decade now, um, full-time uh, commercially for about seven, eight years. So anyway, I got turned on to vermiculite pretty early in my mushroom farming journey. And uh, I'll tell you what, for me, in my spawn, okay, it was a complete game changer, okay? So um, a lot of you guys tuning in right now are probably like, vermiculite in your spawn? Really? Like, there's a lot of people that don't even know about this trick or um, have never even tried it, you know what I mean? And so just listen up, okay? So if you guys have made mushroom spawn before and you've never used vermiculite, hear me out right here. Um, and I'll just say, if you've never made mushroom spawn and you're like looking for a recipe, okay? Um, I will link recipes down in the description box below so you guys can check those out. You can, I'll also put like my Instagram, website, all that down there. Give it a look. But vermiculite is kind of like my secret ingredient, one of my go-tos in my spawn recipes. I've put many different spawn recipes, like I said, on this channel, done tutorials. Uh, this is actually my fourth mushroom farm I've kind of put together now. Since I've been putting these videos together, making spawn for you guys, showing you all the different ways to make spawn on the channel. I've got like several different types of spawn here, okay? We got, this is like oat right here. Some nice oat grain spawn, fully colonized. Blue oyster, by the way. This one, this is lion's mane, okay? This is lion's mane on a little bit of uh, millet and verm, all right? So, two different things going on right there. Both of those, uh, both of those look beautiful, all right? Now, I just wanna say, since I've been making the videos, doing the different recipes for you guys, it like brought back different um, just memories and ideas that I've had from over the years. And it let me kind of just analyze all these different types of spawn. And like as I'm shooting this video, like since I was just kind of pointing there, I have probably like 80 spawn jars here. I'll just, I'll pick some up. I just made these. Okay, so we got some no prep vermiculite and millet. We got lots of these. These are from my lion's mane pheno hunt. I'll tell you what, I'll actually, I'll put a clip up right there so you guys can see all these spawn jars that I'm talking about. But just doing all these experiments, um, I've kind of like been able to analyze the different recipes, because I've just been kind of using the millet for the last, like I said, seven going on eight years. But in the very beginning, I tried all sorts of recipes. I mean, I tried them all, dude, because uh, when I started cultivating mushrooms, I started cultivating on straw okay i was using cold pasteurized straw but i was making my own grain spawn so i got really good at making my own grain spawn that first year i realized it was a just a critical part of a mushroom farm you have to know how to make grain spawn if you want to be a successful mushroom farmer so i learned that my first year i experimented with all different things and then once i started going kind of like full bore commercially that's when i really started fine-tuning a lot of things in my process seeing like what worked good for me now, this no prep millet grain spawn with the vermiculite, this is a recipe that I was actually taught by like an OG mushroom cultivator. Could you teach me? I first learn stand, then learn fly. Yeah. And um, I was just kind of like I said, I was in that initial learning phase of trial and error. I was looking for like new things I could do. I had like learned the process of mushroom cultivation. I was making it happen. I was making money. Um, and I was like, how can I refine the process and make it better? You must unlearn what you have learned. And I thought my spawn was somewhere I could, something I could work on is what I was just thinking. So anyway, um, I get this recipe from OG Mushroom Cultivator, okay? Uh, he gave me this recipe, 1500 milliliter millet, 1000 milliliter vermiculite, 1000 milliliter water. And I'll just say like that changed my life as a mushroom cultivator. Um, th that spawn recipe is flawless, okay? So I've, I've I've made videos on that. I call it like the best no prep grain spawn recipe. I think is what I titled it. But um, it's when I make the millet no prep recipe in a myco bag. And it's this one right here, okay? So 
And this is actually old spawn. This isn't even really even, I mean, it's you, this is very usable, but I've had this refrigerated. I've had this refrigerated probably like three months, believe it or not. I, I just took it out of the walk-in cooler to make the video. And um, I just wanted to kind of show you guys what some of that looks like. Cause all these new bags that I inoculated and I kind of showed you guys videos, um, or I made that video on incubation the other day. All those were inoculated with millet grain spawn. You can see I've got beautiful colonization, and I'll kind of show a few clips up here of a few bags I got colonizing right now using the millet spawn, so the millet vermiculite spawn. And I'll also show, here's another clip right here. I've been kind of experimenting with Milo and this no prep method with using some vermiculite. So anyway, you can see I'm using vermiculite as an additive in my spawn recipe right now. And right now I just want to kind of talk about some of the pros to using vermiculite, okay? And then I'll talk about like some cons. There's the, the cons really, there's nothing serious there. All of the pros outweigh the cons. I'll just say that right now, but just kind of listen up, hear what I got to say about what I think some of the benefits are. If you're not using it, maybe why you should consider using vermiculite in your spawn. Because since I made all these other recipes, you know, like I said, for the channel, just showing people different methods, as I was like watching the mycelium grow in and all that stuff, and I'm like, I was just like, dude, I was like, there's a reason why I, I've stuck with this for the years and done it over and over again. It's because it's like the best. And that's why I titled that one video, the best no prep grain spawn recipe. The mycelium just grows in so much better. It's way easier to read when you have like a bag with the vermiculite, okay? With oats, we got something now, this, this is oyster mushroom, okay? And yeah, I, I got plenty of cube growers on the channel. I'm a, I'm a cube grower myself, okay? And um, I just haven't shown too much of that here on the channel. And, um, we will do that, though, on another channel in the future. So I've kind of talked about starting another channel in the future that'll kind of give you guys a little hint about what I got planned. But for those mushrooms that have those super dense mycelial mats, like oysters or a cubensis or something, it's gonna look that, th it's gonna look thick, it's gonna colonize things like oats, just overnight soak oats, no problem. But when you got like hericiums that have um, kind of like like a wispier mycelium, and this is my Yeti strain, by the way. This is like the, the freaking bad ass mushroom, uh, lion's mane mushroom strain that I like to run. And I'm doing a pheno hunt right now to even create po a possibly a better one for you guys. I'll be releasing these genetics here in the near future. Um, but I've been working on that pheno hunt diligently recently. But for hericiums, Sometimes uh, the mycelium is wispier and it's harder to read. That vermiculite, just the way it kind of buffers the moisture in there and it hydrates everything, my hericiums become so easy to read, okay? Um, it just I don't, it makes it way easier. They'll pin way more irregular on oat bags, I realize. Things like my hericium americanum, hericium coralloides, like my coral tooth. Um, the coral tooth, really, in my opinion, I do not like growing that on oats. I only like putting that on, uh, it's just so much easier to read on a vermiculite millet uh, spawn. I do have some Milo vermiculite spawn, like some no prep. And here's some, actually, that I've shaken these up recently, so you really can't see the mycelium growing in this too much. But this is Milo vermiculite no prep. And I'm liking this, too. But I must say, I like the millet better just in general the consistency of it um the inoculation points if, if and i'll say too like if someone would like hold a gun to my head right now and they were like mike pick a grain to make your spawn dude millet or milo no prep and if i had to choose and it was like that serious i'd be like millet 100 percent millet so i'd be sticking with millet for um something like that milo like i said it is working but if i had to pick one uh i'm picking millet I've got some bulk bags of Milo though that I am testing, and uh, I'll let you guys know they're they're actually working great. And but like I said, if I had to pick one, I go towards the whole millet thing. Now, just like I said, talking about the hericium with uh, watching and being able to observe the mycelium growing in a little bit better with the vermiculite recipe. So that's one thing I've noticed. I've also noticed too your moisture. Okay. Your moisture level, vermiculite is a buffer, okay? So if you're off at all with your moisture level, the vermiculite can kind of buff it and, and uh, fix it, whether you're a little low or a little high. So like I said, it's a buffer as far as moisture is concerned. I also think like 
some of these no prep recipes there's so many like no prep haters out there but i feel like there's only no prep haters out there because they haven't tried my recipe <laughs> so uh, no such thing uh, bad student only bad teacher uh give it a shot like i said um it, with this whole verm because i think the verm when you're doing the cook process that is even a buffer as far as um, getting that moisture right during the cook. I think what a lot of guys hate on the no prep grain recipes, it's because the moisture levels that they have just aren't working out for them uh, quite right. Some people complain about having like a little hockey puck or whatever in the bottom of a jar or it's not good consistency. But look at this guys, there's there's no clumping. If you guys, if you guys see any clump in here, it's gonna be from my agar, you know? But like, this is beautiful grain spawn, man. Absolutely beautiful. I'm like, this is the millet, millet and verm. Let me, and I'll shake one of these up just a little bit so you can see it. But this is the, this is the Milo one, okay? But that vermiculite, it is such like the good little buffer in there. You still, I will say, if you want to get like the best consistency with the jars, you need to do what's called a hot shake when you kind of unload your PC and you're in front of the flow hood here, and you can kind of just shake those jars while they're hot a little bit to bust up that little hockey puck type of thing of grain you got going on at the bottom of a no prep jar. And uh, you can fix it right away with a little hot shake. With a bag though, it doesn't even matter. Like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't even matter. Like, these bags, when I make a bag with my no prep recipe, I just let it cool in the PC, and then I unload it right here in front of the flow hood. And then I just inoculate it with my LC, my liquid culture. But I never have to do like, like a hot shake or anything like that with the bag. I could, I could let the bag cool in front of here for like two days and get, let it get completely chill out, you know? Come back with the LC, knock it up, shake it up, and then uh, you're good to go. Now, I'll just say like, you, it, it can be a benefit. Like, let's just say you don't want to use vermiculite. I'll say the benefit of that is is you don't have to just use that ingredient, you know what I mean? It can be straight grain. Obviously that's cool, you know, to do a recipe of just like straight grain and water to make your spawn, but I'll just personally say with like years of experience doing this, the consistency is way better with that vermiculite in there. You know, like if you ever get like some good, um, just garden soil or whatever, uh, a lot of times it'll have a little bit of vermiculite in that just to kind of help be another buffer or, or like even for aeration is um another reason and that that's another thing too it can help with aeration in spawn or even i don't use it in bulk substrate but it, it does it plays a role in all that in bulk substrate for gourmet cultivation obviously people mixing it with uh coconut co uh, core or whatever the it plays a role as far as like hydration it's, it's able to absorb and just be a, like a moisture buffer but it helps for aeration as well so lots of reasons why you could potentially want to use it in other things. Overall though, just the consistency it gives your spawn is super nice. Like if I had to choose vermiculite or no vermiculite forever, I would be like, yo, always put vermiculite in the spawn. It's kind of like the best way to do it. Like I said, I know it seems cool to just use uh, grain and water and it definitely does work. I'm not like hating on it at all. Um, I just say I personally prefer the vermiculite in my spawn and uh, but yeah, I don't know. It's just like, I've been helping a lot of people online recently with their spawn recipes. I've had a lot of people tell me they're really liking my spawn recipe. And uh, I've, I've, I've put this out on the internet on different like message boards and stuff like that for years. And it's pretty rare when someone does it, I feel like. So, um, and it's cause a lot, a lot of us as mushroom cultivators, like we're fairly OCD about this stuff, you know, especially if you've got a method that works for you, a lot of us are stuck in our ways. <laughs> And um, I, I'm kind of the same way, you know, in, in, a, in an aspect, like I kind of like to stick with my methods, but if there's something I know is like way better, that's when I'm totally willing to at least like, you know, give it a shot and uh, trial it, see if it does work better. If it does work better, then I will, I will. I'll make the full conversion and I'll switch over. Like if I see the light, dude, I will switch. But um, yeah, anyone who wants to give it a shot give it a shot like i've just been seeing it over and over again i feel like and i want you guys to try it if you have any questions about like spawn recipes using vermiculite in the spawn you know just put it in the comment section below another thing i wanted to kind of mention in here too is just the amount of time that vermiculite cuts out okay if you're doing like a simmer or if you're doing soaks and all that stuff you can just put all this stuff in a bag 
cook it, and then with, with a few hours after it cools down, you have spawn to inoculate and work with. You can do it all in one day. You don't have to stretch this process out over multiple days. And uh, I know if you do the simmer and stuff like that, you can do just like a simmer in one day, but it's still, then that's extra steps. I never have any problems with uh, the millet though. I just feel like it's such a great recipe. But yeah, if any of you guys have questions on using vermiculite in your spawn or anything like that, uh, just put it in the comment section below. You know, tell, tell me your thoughts about it. But if you haven't tried it, give it a shot. I just feel like it'll help so many people. Like, I love using it in my spawn. Um, but anyway, guys, uh, that's all I really got for you on this one. Hopefully you found that helpful and informative. If you did, please drop this video a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But that's all I got for you on this one. And I will catch you guys on the next one.